Hey, it's Don the Arch Professor. Today I'm going to go into my actual resin casting that I have been working on. I showed it in my live uh, feed last week, this past week. Um, this is the Trilobite that I did. Um, I was just going to go over the process real quick on what it took to make this and you know how you can address things like this on your own too. To do something like this, the construction, you have to have the basic idea, obviously. Once you have an idea, you have to decide on size and what you're going to make it out of. Now, for me, it was a no-brainer. For me, what I was going to use was a plasticine. It's uh, wed clay. It's made by a, a Disney company, what they used to make maquettes out of. Around here, it's all over the place. Uh, they use it for the car industry to do the mock-ups of the cars, and then from there, they start to do the molds or the scans for the, for the computer. But this is what I got from that. Um, I started basically with an idea in a basic size. This is clay. Um, this is literally all this is is clay. Um, and it's only done on one side because you can't really mold both sides. Inside of this is um, actually uh, a wire frame that I made. I wrapped numerous wires together, twisted them around, and then I made a sh shape basically out of that. And then from there, I wrap tin foil, just tin foil up to make the basic shape, and then I wrap wire around that, and that's the bed for the clay to stick to. And that's exactly what you see here. This is the finished one. It actually feels like um, like uh, wax almost, or like some odd plastic, but this is plasticine, um, what they use for like stop motion animation and things like that. All the details were hand done into here, into this thing. Um, let me just show you some of the tools here. Let's put this down, actually. Um, this is just a block of wood I put a couple holes into. Hang on, let's put this in the right direction. Um, just to hold on to it. And this is what I do with anything that I sculpt like that. But I've got a box of tools that I've acquired from, you know, m many areas. Um, this is uh, like a blending tool and the whole works. Um, cutters and um, knives and things along that line for doing it. Uh, wooden paddles. I've got exacto blades. I've got impressors and things along that line. Um, ones that I can put special blades and all kinds of things into it, though. Um, but this is what I use to actually sculpt this. The rest of it's all done by hand or this box here to make this. And for this one here, what I had to do is I sculpted the one side of the item. These fins on either side are actually separate pieces. You can't cast certain items all together and expect it not to uh, have bubbles or something in it. There might have been a way I could have done it on this, and in a if future one, I would probably try to figure it out. Um, it just makes it easier so you don't have to attach pieces to make your finalized piece here, um, the final version here. But let's move it up a little bit. But then once I've cast this or, or I've uh, sculpted this and I've got my finished sculpt and I'm happy with the sculpt, which you see it's identical to that, I cast this in a mold, just one side of it. Now here's the mold for the finished one of this. Um, and literally I cast half of it, um, this half here, and uh, then I actually made a copy of just the top. Now here is the copy of the top. It's called a slush mold, what I did, and I sloshed around this resin here to make a coating on there and I cut off any extra and then from there I've got you know the copy of one side done hard so it's not going to get messed up to turn this over and try and sculpt the other side I could have messed up the original part that I did because this is soft so you have to think about what you're doing a little bit and, and schedule it into a way that'll accomplish your goals but here is the actual sculpt so then I pu pushed clay into the hollow shell of the front and then I would sculpt I sculpted individual legs and you know the mouth area and the lines and everything else was sculpted inside this so this is a hollow shell for the one side and then clay on the other that I've actually sculpted and then from here this piece is now put back in the mold and it fits perfectly because obviously I cast this from the mold and then I pour more of the rubber molding on the top and I've got a complete mold so the next one that would come out of the mold you know isn't going to have clay on it it would be one of these this is the exact thing that came out of this mold Literally, it fits in there perfectly, and this is this is where it's come from. It's cast. I've cut openings on the top to cast the resin in there, and the whole works. So, um, then I've got two. This is for the fins. As I said, they're cast separately. So I've got you know fins that have to be glued on, um, and then filled in with that too. Two fins. They're each different. So, and then the final part of the mold is the base. Now again, with the base, I just decided on a shape for the base. Uh, again, it's clay. 
I cut a piece of cardboard based on the size of my wood that I was going to put this on. And again, these pieces of wood, it's a strip. I bought a one by six strip of high quality oak from Menards. I cut it down. I routered the edges to make it fancier. Um, and then I stained it myself here at the house too. I sanded it up in the whole works. It's not that complicated. It's something easy to do. It looks very professional. It's got a nice look to it. But I made a piece of cardboard that fits on the top after I had one of these cut and ready to go based on the size of my item and how I wanted it to display in my finished sculpt here. So you can see the cardboard. Um, I use cardboard too because then I can glue it down to the box I have to make for the mold to come out properly. But then I've put, you know, the same thing. I've put um, tin foil under this. And then I put, push clay all over it into the shape I wanted it. And then I used the tools again and made the, the sandy looking texture on the top of this. And then from there, I made this mold here, which literally is a drop-in mold. This one, I don't even have to worry about bubbles. I don't use anything to it. This just literally fits perfectly in there. The mold is identical to the actual item that I carved in every single detail. There's no bubbles that come out when you do it that way. That The new molding stuff that they have these days is just real nice stuff. It's a no-brainer. It's an easy thing that most people can do. But once I cast it, the next step would be to clean it up and prime it. I use a gesso primer on all these items. You can see i got many of the same things. We've got like 20 or 30 of these already done, ready to go right this minute. Um, boxes are in-house, the whole works. But once I go ahead and, and finish painting the the resin cast for the base, it's coated, you know, with a clear coat so it won't rub off or anything. And then from there, I'm drilling holes in it to mount the plastic uh, a, a greenery here. Now this stuff is literally I hunted around at a um, I hunted around at you know a home supply store like Michaels I think it was, and um, I just bought some fake. Uh, greenery. I looked for the best, most realistic uh, ones I could find, and then I actually hand painted those to add the color differences you would see in the real thing. Now, there's a rod that supports that, and all that is is brass rod. Now, this is just a piece of brass rod. I think I paid like dollar eighty nine or something for each one of these, and then I just whack it down with a chop saw, and then I've got a grinder outside. We grind it smooth so nobody's going to get cut or anything else, and, and grind it down soft on the edges, and that's the rod that actually you can see in there that holds the trilobite up. So again, that's not a lot to it. Um, he's movable. He comes off the stand if you want. Um, it's just drilling a hole in there and mounting it that way. The antennae you see are actually a spool of uh, brass wire that I've cut down. This is the same thing you see right there. And again, you have to rough these up with sandpaper, and then they can be primed and then painted too, just like you see here. So it, it, it really adds to the feature. They're really stiff. I've drilled holes with the exact same size of wire or a, a drill bit as the wire. Now, this is a standardized wire size that you can get a drill bit. So just like the plants, the base of the plants, there's a standardized drill bit that just happens to be the same size as the wire that holds the plants in. Now, the plants, I tried to get ones that actually have wires so you can bend them around and push them where you want. You can cast many of the same items really easily. Um, again, you see there's a whole bunch here. Sometimes you have to do some filling, but what I use for that, the best stuff on the market, Milli Putty. Now, it's a one-to-one -one mix. You mix part of this to part of this, and, you know, that's all there is. These, there's two different kinds. This is a super fine, and this is standard, depending on what part of the model you're working on. But then you can mold back into this. It turns rock hard and fills in any spots you have or any imperfections. So, anyway, that's really all there was to doing this. You know, you have to have some basic skills and knowledge. The casting part is simple. You can cast anything really easy and really quick with the modern day uh, rubber stuff that you can get. I mean, this thing will last me for a long time. I'll get hundreds of copies out of this one here. And what you do is, if you want to make more and this gets bad, I always save the first casting or, you know, the second, depending on which one comes out best. And I save that as my model. So from that point on, I can cast a copy from a plastic piece and make as many as I want. Anytime I need a new mold, it's just a matter of, you know, making another one of these here. But literally, that's all the process is. There's a lot of stuff spread out here, but it all makes one specific thing at the end. And I've made many different things like this. I've sold every single one I've ever done for a profit. 
um, a decent profit anyway too so you know this isn't a fly-by-night thing I'm I've already got markets for this you can copyright these you can put a patent on the design um, especially if you've come up with it and that's what I've done so I can sell hundred thousand of these if there's a market for a hundred thousand of these it would be great if there was you know I never you know jump to conclusions or, or count my you know eggs before they're hatched for something like this who knows what's gonna happen with it I'll probably even take it to a show one of these days within the year one of the comic cons sci-fi cons monster cons or any of that something like this could sell in a museum an art gallery a zoo you know there's many different options to put this out there you know collectors and in places like that nothing like this exists until I made one so find an area that you know there's nothing out there like it if it's something you're interested in doing I've talked to some other folks and some other people have made comments that they've cast stuff as well too you know it's fun I like doing this even if I didn't make a dime I would do it still because I love doing art and artistic stuff that's the key to this working you gotta like what you're doing I love doing eBay I love doing models I love doing sci-fi I love doing fantasy and creation so for us it's a win-win all across the board and you know again I've already got some real good interest in this right now I've got two confirmed sales from people who saw it in person who want to buy one right this minute um, and with this, you know, you get like a couple hundred bucks into making all this, all this stuff here I've had, like the tools I've already had, all together, you know, to make about 50 of these, you got a couple hundred bucks into making, you know, mass quantity. And the rest of it's all your time. A roll like this, you know, I can do, you know, 30 or 40 of these models with a big size roll. Um, and this is like four or five bucks. These rods are, you know, a dollar something and you can do, you know, a dozen or so with one rod. You know, the resin ones, you cast this, you know, you only have to cast it once. This is about 70 or 80 dollars worth of resin right here or of uh, molding material. The resin here, two gallons goes a long way with something like this. You know, this is really all there is per model here. Um, and it's a few cups, you know, so and again, I went through a couple gallons each for each one of these items here to do. So, you know, that's all there is to it. You know, it may seem like a lot. It, there's options for you to do all kinds of stuff. Think outside the box. I found some niches. No one did the niches, you know. I didn't know if they were going to work, but everything's worked. You just got to look and investigate. Research is key in doing stuff like this, just as it is in reselling items yourself. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Please hit the like button down below if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and tell a friend.